Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my final day here in Germany with the Audi R8 rear wheel drive coupe performance edition where we've been enjoying the incredible atmosphere and scenes of the green hell, the Nordschleifer, and also endeavoring to tick off one of the items on my automotive bucket list where we attempted to do 200 miles per hour in this very car. In fact, if you want to see that video now, you can click up in the top right hand side of the screen to go and see what happened. But now it's time to go home and give this car a rest. In fact, with over 1500 kilometers traveled in this car and more than double digits of fill ups, my bank account is now almost completely empty. In fact, I've got just enough spending money left for one more tank of fuel. However, the problem is we've got to get from here in West Germany all the way over to my home in Buckinghamshire in England on that one tank. Now, if we were talking about a BMW 5 Series diesel, that might seem like a, a very much achievable feat. However, with this R8 and its only 73 litre fuel tank and its 5.2 litre V10 engine, it's gonna be somewhat of a challenge. Okay, so I've just filled the R8 up at the petrol station right by the Nürburgring with the best available fuel. And we're displaying 550 kilometers of range on the display here. And that's all well and good, but I've got some numbers. I've did some calculations. So the R8 tank is 73 liters in size, which is 16.05 Imperial gallons. Okay, now Audi claim that the combined consumption potential of this car is 22.1 miles per gallon now that would equate to 354.7 miles and i'll put what that is in kilometers on the screen the thing is we've got to travel a total of 414.5 miles now to get to france and to the euro tunnel in calais where we're going from now from the nurburgring is 284.5 miles or 458 kilometers and then from there to my home in Buckinghamshire is a further 130 miles. So based on that math, we've got about 60 miles less fuel than we should have. With that, I'm gonna get the car started now, get straight on the road, and we'll just pay attention to the consumption stats and, 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 and see if this is gonna be possible. Okay everyone, so let me give you a quick update. There's been a little bit of a plot twist. We've been on the road for an hour and 45 minutes, as you can see on my display here. Covered 125 or so kilometers and averaged a fairly respectable 26.7 miles per gallon. However, we are at the legendary Spa circuit. We've done about 10 kilometers driving around this forest looking for a cool viewing point off the circuit and in terms of this challenge, well, to be honest, I'm really struggling, not because it's difficult to maintain good economy and efficiency with the Audi. That's proved to be pretty easy, but the main problem is the massive temptation to just floor it. I just want to be driving that car fast. So it's so frustrating and difficult to keep my foot off the pedal. But nonetheless, we're doing pretty good, and I think we're still in good shape to get back without touching a fuel tank. Now, it sounds like there's some stuff going round, but don't know if we're gonna see anything. Quick, 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 quick. Who 
says you can't have fun on a fuel economy road trip? This is unbelievable. We're gonna walk down now and see if we can find the braking zone at the end of the straight. Wow, yeah, we can see it. Well, that was a totally unexpected and awesome experience. I can't believe what we just witnessed. That was the most exhilarating racing I've ever watched. Right, the fact of the matter is though, we've killed, we've been here about an hour and a half actually, gosh. And we uh, are in a little bit of a rush now to get our train. So now is actually a great time for me to mention the sponsor of today's video because when I did my last endurance challenge, that involved a lot of driving, trying not to stop as much as possible. And so Y Foods got in touch to help me out with that video with their meal replacement drinks. And today they've done exactly the same when I told them what I was planning on doing with this R8. So it was a big thank you to Y Food for sponsoring this video. Y Food is a nutritionally complete, ready to drink meal that can keep you going for as long as three to five hours. Y Food is also both lactose and gluten free, which is great. But if you're on the vegan persuasion side of things, there is also a vegan range available for you as well. Now these drinks bottles come in both 500 mil and 330 mils. I've got a load of these 500 mil ones for me today. In fact, I've got them all stuffed in the glove box there, which is fantastic because we've got to get going. But also if this is a bit too heavy or bulky for you, there's also powders and bars available that you can try as well. If you're planning on going anywhere, I'd always recommend taking a Y food with you because regardless of whether you are in a rural location or somewhere even more remote, you're able to get your recommended nutrients without having to sacrifice time. The one that I'm holding in my hand and the one that I'm actually about to drink as we get going is the crazy coconut flavor, one of my favorites, along with the banana flavor as well. That is awesome. And if you can just about hear me over these crazy cars going round, I'd love to mention that you can get 10% off your Y food order from the 1st of October using my code Joel YouTube, which can be found on screen now and also in the description. All of the details can be found below. Thanks so much to Y food for sponsoring this video. Now let's get the Audi started, get back on the road and see if we can continue on this fuel economy challenge in a naturally aspirated V10. Let's go. Okay, so accelerating very slowly away. What's really helpful with this Audi actually in this challenge is that not only do we have that live consumption meter, which I can see our average as well as exactly what we're getting right now, a bit like my seven series, but we also have the power and torque monitor. So I can literally just make very gradual changes with my foot on the pedal and just see how that affects the amount of power and torque we're using. And I'm trying to not go over 10% power. Funnily enough as well, since we left Germany over a hundred kilometers ago, where it was on 550 kilometers of range, it's gone up since around 560. So things are looking good at the moment with an average of 26.5 miles per gallon. We have 364 kilometers to go to the Euro tunnel, and then there's another couple of hundred watts on the other side. So at the moment, we're on track to potentially do it. It could be interesting, that's for sure.
we've made it then to the Euro Tunnel Le Shuttle Terminal here at Calais. And whilst we have a little wait to get on our train, I thought I would just update you with our progress. Now, I didn't film too much going through France and Belgium because it was all very much the same, 120, 130 kilometers an hour on the auto routes. However, as we are now here at Calais, as we conveniently see on the screen, we have got a range, according to this, remaining of 300 kilometers and an average of 27.3 miles per gallon over almost 500 kilometers, which I think is really, really impressive. Now, being totally transparent with you, I haven't been really, really trying to keep this economical. I've been doing pretty much the speed limits all the way. And so with that, I think this is genuinely mighty impressive that this 5.2 litre V10 has averaged that at, at high speeds, at motorway speeds. We've been doing 80, 85 miles an hour for most of the time, but as you can see, an average of 86 kilometers an hour and half a tank to get me home. Once we do get off the train at the other side, there is 130 miles to go to my home in Buckinghamshire in England, which is around 210 or so kilometers. So we do seem to have a little bit of margin at the moment, although having said that, going on the train and all that sort of stop starting as they park us and coming off, we'll use some precious fuel. just made it home i'm super tired but i didn't have to stop for fuel we've still got 40 miles of range remaining which is absolutely crazy let's just have a look at the stats then because i need to go in and sleep but there we go we've been on the road eight hours and 35 minutes since we left uh germany well this afternoon 440.6 miles covered 26.3 miles per gallon average and we've been doing the speed limits as well. We've been averaging 51 that entire time over the whole distance, which is pretty good going. And according to the car, well, we are on fuel reserve, but it says 40 miles of range remaining. That's essentially a 500 mile range from this naturally aspirated V10, which I think is remarkable. Anyway, I'm gonna go inside now and instead of wrapping things up, I think we'll do it in the morning. Night guys. Oh, getting into this car, even after a couple of weeks of doing it, does never get easier. And I must say, eight and a half hours in this car yesterday, my back is feeling it. These seats, although feel snug, they're not the most comfortable. I think over a couple of thousand miles in this car, it's taking a little bit of a toll, especially on my lower back. And the fact that you cannot recline them in any way doesn't seem to help. But anyway, that's not, <laughs> not while we're here. Uh, the reason we're here is to, well, summarize today's video and our big journey from Germany to here in Buckinghamshire on one tank of fuel. And as I mentioned last night, we did do it. Now, I have actually been out this morning in the car and I filled it up. Interestingly, we were able to put in 71.06 liters of fuel, which means there was probably only around two liters of fuel left in the tank. Now, having said that, probably used a litre or so getting that fuel, but it just shows that, yeah, there probably was about 40 miles of range left, which I still think is just incredible. I mean, although it was only around 415 miles or so, just the very fact that you can traverse countries on one tank of fuel in a 5.2 litre V10 supercar, I think is impressive. And if I said to you, what sort of MPG numbers do you think you could get from an R8? You wouldn't be saying 27, 28, 29. I mean, truth be told, for sort of the whole first part of the journey, we were sitting around 30, 31 miles per gallon, which I I just think is very impressive, but also shows that if you know how to drive sensibly, you can make these things work for you. But now that we have put a little bit of fuel in and the car goes back tomorrow, I need to use that fuel up. So 
I thought, why not just go out in the car, have a little bit of fun, and just round up my whole experience with it, as actually this will be the last video with the car on the channel. So let's go out now and do that. The car's gonna be very cold because it's not being used for a few hours. Well, overnight, really. say I would I would never get bored of I think my neighbors have probably got bored of it by now but I certainly would never get bored of that it's such a gorgeous sound and I've said it before and I'll say it again I think the V10 almost surpasses the V12 for me in terms of tone I just love it journey to Germany in this car was truly epic. I absolutely love the way this thing looks. I like the attention it garners. It, it's not like a crazy all-out supercar which you can't drive anywhere without getting shouted at, but most people who do notice the car appreciate it and give nods of approval, and I think it's really well judged. And with this being the rear-wheel drive version, I found it to be quite enjoyable and playful to drive. Now, of course, because you've got 570 PS going just to the rear wheels. If you try and accelerate hard out of a corner, the car lets you know about that. It doesn't always grip perfectly. It will slide around a bit, even with traction control on. And I actually like that. It gives a, a degree of fearfulness about the car. Now I touched on the seats as we got into the car very ungracefully, but if I was to spec one of these up, I certainly would not choose the 3,250 pound buckets which we're sat in now because the lack of adjustability and just the firmness of them I don't think quite works for this car. It doesn't feel hardcore enough to warrant this type of seat and so I would have the several way adjustable electric seats that were in the Spider and also available on this instead. They're also a free option, you don't have to pay extra for them. Now from a practicality perspective, I've been quite impressed. I did worry about taking this to Germany. I also brought my friend Charlie along as you will have seen in the last video. And you know, three nights worth of stuff for both of us, plus all of my camera equipment. I actually was a little bit concerned that we might struggle to fit it all in the R8. However, the boot in the front, a bit like my former Porsche Boxster, is seemingly endlessly cavernous. So we managed to fit a lot in that boot and there was a few extra things we needed to put in the car. But you do have this fantastically huge shelf behind you here. So you can fit a lot in there as well. So let's use that fuel up indeed and take a right turn here onto one of my favorite roads and trade a whole day of yesterday being feather footed on the throttle pedal for a lead foot instead. Downshift into. Oh! Whoa! Yeah, I mean, there's no way you can call the R8 numb or lacking in character because with just one stage of traction control off and a fairly heavy foot, it bounces and plays around so much, yet I still know what's going on with the car. Oh, it's just so playful. Oh! Oh! Woo. If I'm not careful, I'm going to make a mess in my pants. It really just sends electrical pulses up your spine when you put your foot down and glue to the road. Oh! just that noise as well, that soundtrack that goes along with it. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. First gear.
your breath away. Well, I quite literally had to pull over there because I was going to make a mess because eh, I just can't believe that they're still making these things. I mean, I think not for long, sadly, but long live the engine, the combustion engine, long live the V10. I think, sadly, this will be one of the last of any sort of naturally aspirated V10. Their days are certainly numbered and I can only pray that they find a suitable alternative to petrol and unleaded so that we can keep these engines on the road. If you ever have the opportunity to drive a car like this, you have to take it because it just opens your mind to a whole nother realm of what's possible with a motor car on the road. Anyway, although this video has sort of ended on a more exhilarating and sportier tone, in answer to the video's question of whether or not you can drive a V10 car, in this case an Audi R8, from Germany to England on one tank of fuel, the answer is yes, and actually with a certain degree of ease because I had some left over and really wasn't trying ever so hard. But what's also true is that you can still buy a new car these days that makes you feel a way that, let's just say, other activities can't. It's a really, really special car. And I'm just gonna say it actually, look, if you have the ability to go out and buy one of these, do it, just go and do it. They're just incredible cars and not the same level of excitement as something twice the price, but for the money, it's just an awesome thing. And um, I would be ready actually to go straight to a dealership now and hand over a big bag of cash because I do not want to give this back tomorrow. Thank you so much guys for, for watching. Please do give this video a thumbs up because by doing that you tell YouTube that the video is good and therefore they'll show it to more people, which means I make a bit more money and can do more stuff like this. So do please help out where you can and give this video a thumbs up or a special thumbs up where you can donate some money, that's even better. But anyway, regardless of all of that, thank you so much to Y Food for sponsoring this video. Thank you again for all watching. And I cannot wait to see you next week where, believe it or not, my dad has finally bought his new car. So stay tuned for that. Thanks all and I'll see you very, very soon.